Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to explain how you can dynamically size elements based on a particular width or height, and why you might want to do this. But first, let's recap how the Community Theme Creator even positions items to begin with. Now as a theme dev, you're able to create an item, let's just create a stack, and position the item by just moving it around. But what is exactly happening here? It's actually the top left corner of the element that gets saved into the community theme creator using X, Y positioning. And what that means is the further away from the left side of the canvas that the element is, the higher the X position number will be. And the further away from the top of the screen that the element is, then the higher the Y position number will be. And you can see here, if I'm up here, this Y number is 35. If I'm down here, now it's 433. I can do it manually just by typing in a value such as 500 here, X position, I can bring up to 900. You'll see it move slightly here. And that's how the start of the positioning works. Then the community theme creator uses width and height to determine how large the item is. And you can see here, there's a width here and a height here. So the height, let's say I wanted it 500, I could type it in manually here, or I can grab the corner and, and, and move it around and you'll see that uh, you'll get a width and height in the middle of the element there. But you'll notice as I'm changing it, the top left corner always remains the same. So now that we have that out of the way, uh, let's say I have a theme here and I wanted it to have the box art and maybe a game's description. Uh, and uh, maybe I want it to have it stacked inside of here since I already have a stack uh, available. So let's say uh, the width was 575 and the height was uh, 1200. All right, so we've got this here. Maybe I want the box on the top and I want the description on the bottom. So I'm gonna create these two elements. Let's say a text scroller would be nice. Uh, I'll take the text scroller. I'll make sure that the metadata is the value of the game notes. I'll get rid of the background for now. That's just a personal preference. And I'll make sure that we've got it vertically oriented. Make it go a bit faster. And now I'm just going to position it inside of the element. Maybe I'll have the width the same as the stack and I'll place it inside the stack. There we go, we got one element here. Maybe I want the stack to be vertically aligned to the bottom. And might want to see the text, so let's bring it up a little bit. Something like that. And we'll make it a bit higher here. Perfect. All right, so now let's make the box image. And we'll also make it, uh, you know, the same size. And now I'm going to put the box front as the metadata. There it is. I might as well position it into the center. And there we go. Perfect. Perfect size. I'll switch this to box front and we'll place it also inside of the stack on top. So it appears on top. Okay. They're, they're pretty close together. So maybe I'll put a slight margin on the text scroller, a margin of like 30. So there's some space in between the two items. That's fine. You know, it looks great. Uh, might as well save it out. Switch to a few different games. Looking good. All right, let's switch to, uh, you know, the original Nintendo system and, uh, now you'll notice that the box is just way too tiny for this system. And this is where auto sizing comes into play. So if I go back into the edit, I can say, well, you know, I've got a width of 575. That's fine. But the height, like it's a static height of 425. Well, if I just say auto size the element, all of a sudden, it will take up the space of the 575 and make it as tall as the image will get, which is great. Now I've got a Nintendo system being able to take up the horizontal space that I want it to. I can switch over to 
Nintendo 64, and we've got it fill up the space proportionally while still the same distance away from the text there. We've got uh, Nintendo DS doing the same thing. Wait a second, the 3DO boxes are so tall that's actually going beyond the height of my stack. Well, we can actually control this using the minimum and maximum values that you might have actually seen inside of the layout panel. So let's go back into here and you can see width as a value, but also you can set a minimum and maximum value. And so let's say I put a maximum value on the box. What I would basically be saying is, make it as tall as you can get because I've auto sized it, but stop it if it gets to a specific height. In this case, let's say I wanted it to be no larger than, I don't know, 870 as an example. There we go. So now I have the box that will scale to any size up to 870. And if you save it out one last time, you'll see that no matter which system that I switch to, you'll always be able to see the box. It'll always be the same margin away from the text and it'll always fill the horizontal space for me, no matter the size of the box art. And that's how you can position elements and have them dynamically size to a particular width or height. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a particular question that you want me to answer, leave a comment below or get in contact with me uh, through the community forums. Uh, but until then, thank you so much. Take care, everybody.